Well, hello everybody. I'm back and just wanted to work on something. I haven't been behind the camera in a while, so I figured why not. I'm glad to see you guys. Um, I was cleaning and organizing my craft room and decided that, uh, well, not decided, but I found a whole box of just, you know, scraps and papers and, and images and graphics and old jelly prints and things like that. Things that you really, when you want to clean up, you don't know what to do with, so you throw it in a box and figure you'll find something to do with it later. Well, I figured I would just go through the box and pull out whatever I, I could that I could make something today, and I found some old graphics that I printed out. This is from the movie Pan. Um, I never even saw it in theaters. I just was just going through the, I think, Google Images one time and um, printed off some of their, I was looking for mermaid photos and I saw that. Let's see, I think I had another one in here. Yeah, see this was the other one. And I liked this one better, but the image was a little bit too big for me, so I resized it. Kind of made it a little bit darker. Well, it's about the same. But I resized it, um, and I was going to make a journal out of it, and figured, why the heck not? And I would, I found this thing of handmade paper that I had. I've had this for years and haven't used it. And I wanted to do a journal or something along those lines that that wasn't Disney, and I was looking for images that I could kind of translate into a steampunk style. So that's what, that's what I'm going to try to do. I've not done this style before, but you know, hey, that's how we learn, right? And so I went through my box of scraps. I have a Pop-Tart box. <laughs> Figured I'd use that for the cover of the journal. But I was going through trying to come up with um, things that would kind of go with the steampunk theme. Uh, I've got some coffee dyed papers that didn't really translate very well, so I'll put that one aside. I found some graphics of uh, some fairy wings. You know, some of these will work with maybe some uh, a wing of Stella on them. Uh, I found some file folder uh, remnants, coffee dyed papers. Um, you know, just all kinds of stuff through this stash that I thought we could work on. You know, things that would work for the steampunky effect look, but I don't want it to just be gears and hot air balloons, you know, because with the mermaid you're working at an underwater on an underwater theme, so Kind of thinking Kraken and, you know, Kevin the Kraken. Let's see, that would work. Uh, these are some, uh, the negative space from one of my uh, die cuts for uh, fence that I use for Halloween, things like that. And this is the remnant that was left over. I just thought that looked really, really cool. So I kept it. And this is the bottom pieces. I thought that got that's got to work for steampunk somehow. And then here's some more uh, file folder pieces that ended up getting thrown in there. So that's kind of what I've got to work. Yeah, see, here's the bigger image. I probably just showed you that already. Let's see. Okay, well. Now that we kind of got an idea as far as style goes, um, let's put some of this stuff aside so we can work on the cover. Oops, those are some extra, those are stickers, I'm going to set those aside. And since we're not using this size, I'm going to, actually I'll put it right here so it can kind of give me inspiration. 
and watch it. So, um, let's put that right there for now. All right, so first things first, I want to trim the tops and this off. And I cannot find my regular pair of scissors anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be super, uh, what do you call it, super straight. I just kind of want to get the image or the, the basic. Oh yeah, this, this is going to suck because I don't have my other scissors. I can't even find my Tim Holtz scissors. Okay, wait a minute, 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 is, nope, they're not in there. Okay, well this is going to take a minute, so let me get this cut out and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, um, I, what I was trying to say before my tongue's got, <coughs> tongue, I didn't cut it all the way up to the fold when I was trimming because um, I know me I can't cut a straight line to save my life so I cut it a little bit on the outside so I can use my paper cutter to make sure I get a straight line oh, let me get my paper cutter now what I do is when my blades get dull on my paper cutter I'll set it aside and then I'll take my marker uh, sharpie or something and write on it cardboard and then I'll use it for cutting cardboard until um, I just can't do it anymore. See, like right here, um, probably can't read it. It's uh, faded. That's the word. Dag nabbit. I do not know how I'm going to do this. That is not long enough. I've got my longer one. Let me see if this works. Not quite, but I'm going to take this back off, put this back on, I'll pull this one off, and put this on. This way I can continue using the blade until it just cannot, period, be moved. So for now, let's go ahead and get these ends cut off. Ugh, I'm going to have to do that too. I'm not going to be able to cut it directly on the fold. Only because I don't have a straight edge right here to make sure this is a straight edge. So, cut most of it off and maybe it'll give me a little bit of leeway. Uh, Alright, this is what I'm going to do. They say if you have an uneven square... Make sure you have one side that's straight, and then you can square it off. So, let's see. white but I have to do it a little bit more no well, not that much all right not this little bit I probably still mess up but All right, so we've got a straight edge and a straight edge. So let's try this. I know I'm probably messing this all up, but there's not a lot of room I have. So let's see. And if it's a little bit off, there's not much I can do about it. All right, so let's try this one. I 
and my scissors, so I'm kind of upset about that. All right, so will that do? Hope so. Let's take the cardboard one back off, put the good one on, and set this aside. I'm running out of room to set things aside. That does not look like it's even. It really doesn't. See what I mean? Right here. Yeah, it isn't. Probably should have just waited. But that's okay. isn't. That's probably because my first um, my first cut wasn't straight. So now everything else is going to be based on that cut. Let's see. Still looks off. At least if it's off, it's off all the way around. <laughs> okay. Now that we've got that figured out, the cardboard one away. All right, so how do we want to do this? Let me pull this one back over. And cut out this image. Some white on that edge. There we go. When I first started out, I thought I was just, you know, the king's pajamas as far as keeping every little scrap and every little um, piece of paper. It's great to recycle, it's great to reuse, it's great to save the environment but not at the cost of your sanity. I found I was saving every stinking thing. Even the little strips that I was cutting off the edge of this, thinking, oh, I can make a great tassel or something out of those. No, what you make is a great mess. Learn to throw it away. If you can't repurpose it, throw it away. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, so what are we going to do now? See, that is still not going to fit. 
ha. Okay, I know you hate sitting there just watching me stare, so I'm going to pause this for just a minute until I can come up with a brilliant idea that you know is going to work and look fabulous when I'm done. I'll be right back. Okay, well, what I ended up doing was, first off, I went ahead and gessoed it. I made my gesso thick. I added some more um, calcium carbonate to it to thicken it up. And I realized that my homemade gesso is old. And uh, it ended up, even after mixing it up, stirring it, and adding some more to make it thicker, it left pieces in it. So I threw it out. And I'll have to make a fresh batch. But I mean old is in like homemade old, two, maybe three years old. So next time I won't make as big a batch because I don't use it as often as, as I probably would warrant using a, a big jar. Uh, this was the jar I put it in. It was an old uh, Alfredo sauce jar and I just didn't use it that often. So, <clears throat> But with chunks that's okay because you know, you want the texture when you're doing steampunk and any kind of mixed media stuff. So that's going to be too light, everything. So I figured what I would try to do is mix some paint that'll match this color as best as I can. So I have an old medicine dosage cup. I'm going to try and find a color or mixes that uh, that will come close. I'm thinking, oh well, let's see what we see. Uh-oh, that one, I know I've got an open one, so hold on, let me grab the open one. Okay, I had an open one. Oops. Oh. was a bit more than I wanted, but that's okay. And let's try, that's still a bit bright. Let's try a little bit of, I have a feeling this might not be what I need. brush to mix this up with. Let's see. I need to add maybe a drop of black. Kind of darken that green some. Actually, that's just about enough. Just about right. Look darker in the... See that? It's a darker green. Let's put that in there. Grab a paintbrush. <clears throat> and let's see what we see. Probably don't have enough to paint this whole thing. But I don't need to paint the whole front, so we'll see. Because the image pretty much covers most of what's on the front. I just want to make sure that uh, 
you know, that the edges are at least covered. If you hear a buzzing, that's my phone. Um, it says no caller ID on it, and I don't answer my phone if it's if I don't have a, if I don't know the number. So, so if any of you do have my number, and I don't answer, send me a text. Let me know it's you, and then I'll answer. But I don't answer it if I don't have, if I don't know who's calling. Now, when most people think steampunk, they automatically think gears, you know, gears, clocks, and hot air balloons. Well, the hot air balloons is because of the, you know, um, 180 Days Around the World or whatever movie that was. I forget the book. Um, and that is, that was the basis of steampunk. But then you've also got you know, movies like The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's a steampunk movie. Um, Demolition Man. That's a semi-steampunky movie. Look, I had just enough. What? Okay. I'm in the middle of something. Dad telling me dinner's ready. <clears throat> but there are different different uh, styles of steampunk you know there's the nautical version there's the animal planet version there's the engineering version and a lot of them are all mixed up together yeah, see how that works That's perfect. Probably have to make some more just to do a second coat. Yeah, because it's kind of... Well, no, not really, because, you know, we're thinking along the lines of steampunk. So you've got the rust and the bronzes and the coppers and the silvers and the blacks and the wrought iron. And, you know, you've got your elements to travel across each genre that kind of brings it all together and that's what I'm hoping to do with this but yeah so yeah I think what I'm gonna end up doing is making another another batch to uh, do a second coat it won't take as much paint We have a little bit of black, right? There we go. That's about right. It's not taking as much paint because the gesso is not soaking it all up. And it's a little bit darker, which I kind of like. 
and see with the with the pieces that were left over from the gesso that doesn't bother me in the least bit because uh, like I said it works on giving texture and stuff to um, to the final piece and we had just enough to do a second coat let me see Alrighty, so let's let that dry. I'm going to go eat some dinner and I'll be right back. Okay, so. Oh, what I'm going to do is. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put the image on the front. Now I have to go wait because I need to do something with the inside first, don't I? <coughs> I think with the inside, I'm just going to go ahead and mix some paint. Let's see, there's some black. Let's throw, actually, let's throw some blue in there because I like the idea of having. A darker inside. <clears throat> See it's black but it's got some metallic blue in it so it tends to turn everything black but when it dries you'll see the shimmer of the uh, what do you call it the metallic paint. <clears throat> I probably should have put some more in there, and I'm using the wrong paintbrush, but that's okay. And I'm pushing away from the sides, pushing out instead of coming to me, so that way I don't get any bubbles of the black or the, you know, the black-blue paint um, showing up on the other, the other side, so. Let me pull this over a little bit. <clears throat> My dad's watching YouTube videos of pranks and getting scared and stuff like that out there. And some of it's funny. But not when it comes to, you know, uh, danger or like children. <clears throat> because that can seriously cause some psychological effects or impairments that can harm a child if it's done, you know, severely enough. So those aren't the kinds or it's like where somebody really, really gets hurt and then like the camera goes off to make it seem like everybody's, you know, okay and that, yeah, you just like, you stupid kitty cat, what are you getting into? Um, yeah, that everybody can try this at home, but you, everybody on the screen actually heard, you know, the bone crack or whatever, that's just... That's just crazy. <clears throat> you know, if it's in good fun, no property damage, no children or animals get hurt. Obviously adults too, but adults are more resilient. Then uh, it sh there should be no problem. Now my oldest, 
She used to love it. Will you stop, kitty? Thank you. Are you getting in on the scare tactics and wanting to scare mom? Is that what you're doing? My oldest, she was into all of that. You know, she loved the scary movies and... <clears throat> It was just, it was pretty cool. Let's see, that's what I didn't want to happen. But at the same time, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt. Just to kind of give. Oh, it kind of looks like a shading. I guess we can go with that. Looks pretty cool. I probably need to change my shirt. I've got one of my new t-shirts on it. <clears throat> I don't want to get it all icky. So if you hear the occasional squeal or scream in the background, that's Dad watching YouTube. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if I have cops beating down my door. We've had a call of a disturbance. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, this is gonna see all that white edge along there. Just a minute. Make sure I got everything. Looks like a do on that side. And a do on that side. And a do on that side. <clears throat> And flip this back over so there's no spare paint. And then I'm going to go along the edges. Now you may not be able to see it too much in uh, in the camera, and it's not a super big noticeable difference. I probably could have used less black and more blue to give it a more of a like an ebony blue effect, but I can see the the shimmer in an otherwise matte black paint that almost looks diamond dusty. It's kind of cool. So, oops, I dropped my towel. Alrighty. Let's set that 
the side and get out the glue gun. <clears throat> Let me pause this while I dry it and I'll be right back. Okay. I don't know if you can see it or not. Do you see the shimmer? You know, sometimes people say they can't find a black metallic and when they do it's almost translucent and you don't really get a pure black that you know but I found that this is a way that you can almost get that same look so all right and now see I don't like that look at that all I did was bend it and the paint cracked. So let's see if we can change that. And if I do it with a little bit of the black, let's see. That also kind of lines the, the look on that. Let's do the same here. And it's going to, it's going to do the same. That looks a little better. <clears throat> and that didn't make sense, but it did to me. <laughs> I just didn't want it so, such a straight line. clean my brushes, but these will have to do for now. Okay, the brush I was using for painting is actually the wrong brush to use anyway. I use certain, um, Certain brushes for glue, certain brushes for uh, other things. Uh, what I'm using for this is a matte gel medium. which is a great glue to use when you're doing mixed media and other things. It's also a great sealant. A great finisher. Oops. See, that's what I didn't want. Some wrinkles are good, you know, especially if you're working on underwater scenes, because then obviously it looks like, you know, waves. 
but if you want to avoid wrinkles, do it from the middle out, which I didn't do. So, like I said, some are okay. I don't want a whole lot. But because this is a scene that's not completely underwater, it's like she's sitting on the rocks on the outside of the, on the shoreline. Okay. There we go. And yes, there are some some wrinkles, but that's okay. Like I said, we're doing steampunk mixed media. So there's going to be wrinkles, there's going to be bumps, there's going to be texture. And we will let this dry and then come back to what we're going to do next. See you in a minute. Okay, so let me see. I've got some file folder things here. Oh, that would work. If we did a signature somehow. Actually, I don't know how that would work. No, I'm not keeping it this color. I'm just testing it for size ability so there's two so technically you have probably two and then there's three of these so four there's four of them no that one's correct that one's that way these are straight up and down Hmm. So I could put one, what looks like a signature, you know, to lift up on the front cover, one on the back cover, and then these I can put on the beginning or the fronts of each of the signatures. I figure I'll put three signatures in here. I could probably fit four, but I'm going to be safe and stay with three. So we put those there for a minute and let's put together some signatures. I'm going to dig for some paper and um, go through what I showed you at the beginning of the video and I'll be right back. Okay, what I'm doing is I grabbed that stack of papers and things that were, you know, kind of just left over and I had all thrown in a box. And I started making signatures. Okay, I said I was going to do three signatures. So those file, those partial file folders that I had already used for something before, I made three of those. I'm cutting up some of the coffee dye papers I have. I'm going to, you know, put these together. I'm not perfect. The measurements aren't perfect. All of them aren't going to be the same, but they're going to be close. I at least want the same amount of, um, what do you call it, uh, pages per, so let me see, I'm just measuring. So this is about four and a half inches wide, and that's what we want. And the only reason I'm cutting it like this is because it was already folded and I don't want to have to reestablish another fold. But these pieces that I'm used that are off to the side, I'm keeping and I found a bug. I love it when those things fly through. Okay, and then uh, I didn't write down measurements, so just 
trying to make sure. There we go. And that one's at about five and three quarters. And this one's kind of cool because I used one of my die cuts before when I was tea staining or coffee staining these. And uh, it left a little mermaid mark. So, in a bird cage, which is cool. And I'll put that in there. I picked out some, uh, some of my homemade papers from, uh, what's it called, Ultimate Crafts. These are A5 handmade papers. I've had these for a couple of years. So I didn't know if I wanted to try and put them on the outside. They won't quite fit. But they do really good as a... Let's do it this way. Let's see. So I just kind of wanted to show you what a little bit about what I was doing. There. That one. Yeah, but these are homemade papers. I love homemade paper. If I had the space, I've got the sink now for it in my craft room. But if I had the space, um, honestly, I would start making my own. <clears throat> using, you know, newspapers, scraps of paper that I don't have to throw out. And a giant blender. I just need to get the screens for it and the frames and the presses. And I know there's easier ways to do it, but if I'm going to sit there and take the time to make homemade paper, then I'm going to actually try to do it right. So, I just wanted to kind of show you what I was doing. Uh, I've got three signatures started. And I'm still going through all of these that I had in that pile earlier. And that's not going to match. So, I'm not going to worry about pink. I might use that. but So, I just wanted to let you know that's what I'm doing. And I will be right back. Okay, this is what I've done so far. I added some rope or twine, you know, hopefully making it look a little bit more nautical. I went ahead and added the uh, the two semi-signatures on the front, or on the front and the back cover. I put together the papers, and I might add some more. I'll probably, this is about as much as I could find with box of scraps I found. So I'll probably end up digging out some of my um, store-bought papers add to it. But this is what I've got so far for my signatures. And I think, I believe there's five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, for each signature. So I've done that. That's about as far as I can go with the box of scraps that I had. Then I decided, since I wanted to do steampunk style, I went ahead and grabbed out my bits and bobs of uh, my steampunk stuff. So I figured I'd go through this and see what I could use in that style and what I can't use. So, let's see. I might end up using some gears anyways, but... This is what I was hoping for. See my octopuses, octopi? Is that how you say that? Um, so I know I can use those. I'll set those right there. There's clocks and some more gears. Um, oh, that was a envelope I got from Miss Jamie. Alrighty, this is Halloween, not, what do you call it? Ah, here we go. 
This was what I was hoping to find. These are some as from a company called Creative Embellishments in their chipboard. And check this out. Um, let's see if I can find a piece of paper that. Oh, good grief. All right, let's do it this way. Check that out. And then there's this one. Let me see. And there's that one. And then that one, which I really like. I can get my thumb out of the way. And then this one. I thought these would work really good with this journal. So I'll set those with put in the Kraken. I'll put that aside. Then we've got some hot air balloons and some windows, bird cages. I don't think I need those. Well, I might, so I'll leave those out. The gears and stuff, I don't think I'm going to use. If I do decide I need one or two, then I'll, I'll dig it back out. But here's some more creative embellishments. And what I thought was really cool is these are these are like chipboard um, pieces. I, if I remember right, they were not that expensive. Not as as expensive as I would have thought, you know, being steampunk and all. See, I love these. Look at these. But yeah, so this is a company called Creative Creative Embellishments. Yeah, I could probably use the heart. But yeah. Uh, I don't really want to use the butterfly because butterflies aren't really an underground or an underwater theme. So we'll put these back in here. Let's see what else do we have? Okay, we have some hearts, some skulls. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and keep those out. Hold that one off to the side. And then I've got some little gears, some clock hands, and some fertilies. So let's put these aside for now. Some more little gears. That's what that one will go in. <clears throat> It. These were maybe not for the hot air balloons, but I'm thinking about the windows. Ah. I don't know what's in here, so let's see what we got in here. Oh, these are cool. What? Steam. Whoops. Steampunk courses. And this one, let me hold this on this side. There we go. Some more horses. These are really cool. No, that isn't quite what I want. And then there's some little bitty pieces I might use to maybe mosaic something on. These are all horses, carousels. 
This is when I was making my uh, steampunk carousel that I auctioned off. I believe it was last year. See, now that looks cool. That's a big steampunk fish. That might be what I do. I might go ahead and go online for some more graphics for some underwater steampunk. Actually, let me leave that one out. And print out some graphics. got a lot of my wings and remember when I was showing you the pieces of the negative pieces from one of my die cuts when I was cutting out a fence well after the fence was cut out and all the bits and bobs were popped out this is some of the bits and bobs that were popped out and I thought how cool are these instead of throwing them away could possibly use them. So I've been kind of keep I haven't kept all of them, but the ones I've done in black I have. So let's see. I might get away with the big ones. Looking like underground treasure or something, underwater treasure. These should go in here. Some more of my metal bits and bobs. There's some hearts in there I'll dig out. Oh, these are some of my clay pieces that I used. Huh. Yeah, this is a little bit of everything I threw together just to, you know, something like that would work for underwater. There's an arrow, one key, clock, some screws, some staples, some old, Ooh, I'll bet you that pearl earring would work. You know, it'll look like underwater treasure, and I just dropped something. Yeah, these are pieces I made with some Sculpey clay. And then just kind of bronzed them a little. Wasn't finished painting them, but that worked. I figure I can use some of these decorations all the way around. Sure, there's more in here. I just don't feel like digging through all of it. So if I need some more, I'll come back to it. But I need some of those little ones. Hmm. But yeah, so that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Um, give me a minute, I'll get all this cleaned up and pull out the stuff I'm going to work with, and I'll be right back.
Okay, well, my computer stopped recording, so I'm on a second video. I'm just going to smoosh them together. But what I did was I took some Tattered Angels Glimmer Spray and some homemade alcohol ink and uh, sprayed two of the chipboard images from Creative Embellishment. If you can see that very well. I'm going to attach them the inside of each of these. I didn't go overboard, you know, with, with coloring them. I just, I sprayed them and I just wanted that little bit of extra to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them. Now I'm not using hot glue because hot glue and paper just for some reason doesn't work real well together. And so, I'm going to use some of this matte gel medium. This stuff works really great for glue and uh, mixed media projects. You know, if you're trying to um, glue on, uh, what do you call it, texture to canvases or things like that. And it wasn't my idea. Um, I learned that watching uh, Marta at uh, Merame Small Art. She's a YouTuber and uh, she does mixed media fabulously. So let's see. And she uses the matte gel medium in almost, my, in almost all of her canvases. Let's see. I'm just getting up the excess excess glue or excess product. Okay. Okay, a little bit extra when I squished it down. But that's okay. So let's do this one. Take what's off my finger. this down as well. And I'm going to get the excess up. This is stuff that's showing. way there's no like excess lumps and things that shouldn't that don't necessarily need to be there. Okay. 
Okay. Let me put those in water and I will close this up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is Liquitex at Gel Medium. There's all different brands. There's all different kinds and styles and things like that. There's medium, there's heavy, there's, um, you know, it's just... Uh, you know, this is not the only company that carries this. And I'm not very knowledgeable to be able to say I've tried this over this one to say this is a better company or not. This is just the first one I've gotten and it seems to work really well. So that's what I'm doing. Sorry, I didn't realize my cup was like right in the middle. So let's put this up for now. All right, and we're going to let these dry. And while these are drying, actually, I need to set something heavier on that because it's wanting to curl up a little. So while these are drying, I'm going to dig through my papers now, and I will be right back. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, uh, what's the word? I'm going to make some embellishments and things for the signatures. So right now, I'm using some of the same paper for one of the other signatures that was a piece of scrap. Uh, here we go. But it's a little bit, I used it to cover the cover of one of the signatures on, I believe it was the back cover, the inside back of the, um, what do you call it, <laughs> the cover, the journal cover. But because I want to use this as a, like a tag, I wanted to give it some, what do you call this? Boy, my words are just not working today. Support? I don't know. My brain is, seems to be on vacation. Oh, I was looking for my paper cutter. Oh, good grief. Yeah, maybe I should go get me a cup of coffee instead of drinking my tea. But that's okay. I'm sure there are people way smarter than me that probably already had my um, words answered or my sentences finished. Knowing that I'm as crazy as I am. And I'll put a sentiment right there. Let's see if I can find one. I don't have a whole lot of stamps. But, um... I'm just using what I can. Oops. Well, that just wasn't funny. Okay, let me fix that real quick. There we go. Nope. A little bit lopsided. Alrighty. Let's put this off to the side. Okay, let's see if we can semi get this sort of no oh, good grief well, I guess that'll just have to do oh I see oh, let's see Good thing I checked because I would have done it upside down. Mm. 
No, that didn't turn out real well. Kind of smeared. Supposed to say, I'll be your anchor. Yep. I know why. Oh, where did you go? Where did you go? These little stamp mats, uh, this one came from, actually it came off of a big piece. I know I've said this before and I've just, I cut it down. Um, but it's like a, a hard foam. But it still gives a little bit of squish. I believe this came from Doris. And uh, it actually really helps your stamping come out a lot crisper and a lot uh, clearer. So let me try this again on a stamp thing. Much better. See the difference? As opposed to the bottom. Sorry about the glare. I wonder if that'll focus. There we go. I'll be your anchor on top. And then I'll be your anchor on the bottom. Okay. And the best thing to get stays on off your stamps, your ink pads and everything. I'm sure they have stays on cleaners, but because it's an alcohol based ink, it's permanent. Just use an alcohol pad and it cleans it off really, really nicely. And even if you have old stamp blocks, you know, acrylic blocks like this um, that have um, the permanent stains on them that you haven't been able to clean off with a baby wipe or even white uh, window cleaner. Good golly, what is wrong with me today? Um, it works. It takes a little bit of uh, elbow grease if it's been there for a while, but it still works. using that as a weight. Perfect. See, even though the stamp is really small and minute, all it takes is maybe just a little bit of maneuvering, kind of twisting it every which way in that, and it looks almost like It was its own, you know, stamp. Makes it look much bigger than it was. Oh, okay. All right, so we'll set that one aside. What else did we want to do? We had some pieces left over. <clears throat> Um, oh, here's some of the, uh, what do you call it? Good grief. I didn't have a whole lot of, um, steampunk store-bought papers because a lot of times folks just like to make their own. And if not, I'm usually paying an arm and a leg. This isn't quite steampunk, so I'll set it aside. This one isn't quite, but it, you know, it could substitute. 
down. Okay, well, this one is getting a little bit too dull for that. So let's put this on and try again. Now, if your channel, I don't know if you can see that or not, it gets pieces of paper that are just kind of built up in there. A lot of times that will dull your blades. I usually use, uh, I have an old uh, toothbrush around here somewhere that I use. I can't, oh, that's too soft. Um, that's a little bit rougher. But clean out your groove every so often. And it, it does help to keep your, your blade sharper a little bit longer. See, there we go. See, I usually use a toothbrush, but I don't feel like digging for it right now. So I just grab the stiff. Um, <laughs> paintbrush. I may have to hang up for a little while and go drink some coffee or something because, boy, I'll tell you what, my brain's just is not working today. So, the only reason I'm doing this is not so much just to give it um, an inked effect look. But to kind of fill in the white edges along, you know, that is showing. See, I'm not doing it very strongly. Just enough to cover the... There we go. And we will set that aside for a minute. I determine actually I know what I want to do. Okay. Yeah, it's just a piece of scrap glass that's got beveled edges that I got at a, a like a consignment store, a market type thing, and it's heavy. Um, it's a little thinner than I like, but I like the fact that it's got the beveled sanded edges, so you know you're not going to cut yourself. But I didn't have a big enough uh, stamp block. All I had was well, what you seen wherever it went, and that only little two by two square. And some of my stamps are a little bit bigger than two by two, obviously. So. Um, I thought that would make a great stamp block. And I want to put the image of the mermaid right here, but I don't want it really, really, you know, um, what do you call it? I'm going to put the ghost image here. Here we go. I don't want it as dark. There we go. sure I get it all. Okay, I just want a really faint image. I'm going to put this one here. And then this one here. Here we go. See? Really faint. But you can see it. People can still write over it. Uh, I hate the fact that we can't listen to music in the background while we're videotaping. I understand the reasoning behind it copyrights and all of that. It just sucks. <clears throat> because I really like, you know, music is one of my favorite ways to relax next to crafting and reading. 
All right, so let me put this back. Um, here we go. Set that over there. Let me dry this off. over here. Put that right there. I'm sure we could probably find a use for that um, original print, the mermaid that I used. Wipe that off real quick. Okay. Let's see what we're going to do. Oops. Good night. All right. Let's see what we're going to do next. Um, I printed this off of a, an old map book I got. Instead of tearing out the pages, um, because I like the maps so much, um, I figure I can just flip it over or copy through my, my printer machine printer there and that way I can make as many copies of the same map as I want just kind of cool you know and then I just trim it down to what I need I don't quite know what I need right at the moment so I'm just gonna trim off the white space and then I can measure it for whatever else I need Actually, the book was in a little bit cockeyed, so I'm not going to have a straight edge. There we go. And right here. So I'm not following the line of the white on the map itself because the book was crooked. I'm just squaring it out according to my printer. Let's see, for example, like right here, I don't know if you can tell. You see that white, that white edge right there that kind of goes away? Yeah. There we go. That's because the map was crooked. The book was crooked when I copied it. So now that I've got it squared on all four sides, I have a map. Which looks really, really cool. Still not quite sure what I'm going to do with it, but you know, hey. And on this side, oh, I had a stamp, or no, it was a stencil. Where did that stencil go? It was a stencil that you could lay down that when you brushed your ink on or whatever, it gave you lines on your, uh, on a blank piece. I mean, I'm sure I could sit there and you know, take a ruler and do the same thing, but I'm not quite sure how I want to do this. I'll probably do this one. Oh, the other three pieces that I had left over from that creative embellishments when I was pulling out the unicorn, or the, <laughs> the other ones, um, had three left. So I figured that was perfect to go ahead and decorate the front of each of the signatures with. I haven't, um, what do you call it? Holy, what is the thing? Yeah. I'm doing good with words today. Let's do this one. Yeah, I added an old envelope that I had. I licked it close. Well, didn't lick lick it. I, I 
fastened it so it was closed, folded it in half, and then um, cut the ends. And then I used my circle cutter, uh, my circle punch, to put a half circle on one side so anything that gets tucked in there will be seen and be easy to pull out. So let's see. Okay. There's my pencil. I'm going to mark it right there. I'm going to fold it in half. And, you know, I could coffee stain this to make it look older. I could, you could do pretty much whatever. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, because, let me see, where did I mark it? Oh, good grief. It teaches me, doesn't it? Okay. this is another page in the, and see it doesn't matter to me if these are all misshapen, misshapen because the outside cover itself that gives this you know a little bit of a polished look isn't the same size as long as it fits in the book itself uh, these don't stick out the end of the, co the journal cover itself so, so we'll do that and that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be, uh, you know, working on little pieces of ephemera to go into the journal. I did work on the cover a little bit, but the pieces are drying. Whoops. So tell that's very much not quite done not quite sure what I want to do next but there's something I want to put here whether it's some stamping or I'm not sure wood cover works for me a little bit but just not quite enough so I'm almost there but you know sometimes you just have to put it down and come back to it later and then you know what you want to do and that's what I'm doing but this is this is what happened on the inside cover of these so I'll do some stamping and stuff on the inside of these and I figure this one will go first since there's already a mermaid on that one and then this one will be next or this one actually so I can separate the colors a little and then this one when it's all put together so, not bad for a Pop-Tart box, right? Not so far, anyway. But, yeah. And I'll be adding more. I went, um, I dug through my jelly plate, jelly plate papers and found a couple more I'll use. You know, I forget what this called that, uh, there's a word for that. Um, where you put the paper down. Let me see if you can see that. It starts with a D and I'm, I'm brain farting right now. So obviously, um, I can't figure out what the word is, but to me that looks like coral. So I love it. That's one of my favorite, my favorite patterns. And then I've got something that looks like bubbles and <sighs> this was a cleanup sheet, but it's a pretty, well, I'll have to do something with the back of that, but still. But that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. And then we've got a couple pieces that we're working on. That I'm kind of running out of, um, what do you call it? Steam, as far as to what to do. So I'm gonna set this down. 
I'm not going to work on it for a couple days and then I'm going to come back to it. So there will be a part two um, just so I can get some creative juices back and remember how to speak. <laughs> Use my words. Um, okay, so I'm going to let you go for now. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up, please, and click the subscribe button. Um, and if you really, really like it, you can share it. Uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And um, always, always, always remember, keep the humor in life. Because if you don't, life sucks. It really does. On that note, have a good one, guys.